Hello everyone, it's Lily, and today I'll be making a video on character tropes that commonly occur in Otome games. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through a list of uh, character tropes that I have come across frequently over and over many times. Um, the ones that are known quite well in English as well as some that are known in Japan but aren't really, haven't really been explained in uh, English very well. Um, and then I'll give you, you know, a couple of uh, characters as examples or, as well as sort of like the descriptions of what they are. And I do have my notes because... <laughs> I'm not confident of you to remember every single one. But anyway, let me start. So firstly is the Tsundere character. So everyone, I think, or at least quite a few of you know of the Tsundere characters because I'm not gonna lie, they do make me smile the most. Um, and it's basically Tsun meaning kind of like spiky, like kind of, um, they're either a bit bit like on the defense or a bit mean or you know that sort of thing and then dere is kind of like soppy like when they become kind of almost like puppy like you know when they become like kind of cute and show their sort of lovey-dovey side almost and tsundere is when a character is incredibly sort of like a bit mean a bit aggressive in a way to try and hide their shy side so I think the very stereotypical, you know, quote that you often come across is that it's it's not like I like you or anything. <laughs> it's that, and that is a very stereotypical line that you see amongst girls and um, you get that for guys as well. And a couple of examples I have here is Niku from Olympia Soiree. Oh, he's probably one of my favourite sun boys, honestly. He's always so uptight and everything, but when he gets flustered, oh my heart, his blushy face. I just, I don't... Anyway, and another one that I really like is Yuki from Cupid Parasite, the game that's coming out this November. And, oh, he's a good one as well. He's always, you know, trying to be like, trying to be a bit kind of always trying to be better than the MC or you know trying to he's always hiding him his flustered self and again that's just such a cute cute trope it's one of my favorites now the next one I have is da -da -da -da. so literally just lovey-dovey lovey-dovey <laughs> and a great example of this is Impi uh, from Code Realize and Enomoto from Color and Malice now this trope is kind of where the characters just always cute from the start they're just always lovely and nice to the main character and continue to be so um when they get together too so it's i personally find it a tiny bit boring because there's not really i like the contradiction that you get in tsundas uh, whereas da -da -da -da, it's just kind of the same lovey doveyness it just keeps on amplifying as you go along and although it's cute and i like watching it um it's not high it's not up there in my favorite tropes now the next one, and one of my friends uh, absolutely adores this one, is the kure trope. Now this is a combination of kuru, so cool, and dere. So it's commonly the trope where, and I'm sure many of you probably come across this one too, where the character's like really cool, he's got this exterior where you look at him and you're like, oh he's cool, like he's a senpai or the boss or something and all of this, but when you get to know him, when he ends up liking you, you see like the slightly blushy side where he might be taken aback because you've said some, the main character says something cute and he kind of goes a bit red or something. So, you know, the gap between that cool exterior and the blushy self is just like the best. And, you know, good examples of this include Shu from, um, Buster Fellows, who, you know, is always acting kind of cool. He's a killer killer. He's got like that, I don't know, cool vibe about him. And another one is Shelby, which, oh, I love Shelby. So again, he's from Cupid Parasite. And, uh, oh, he's just, he seems like a really cool boss, but, oh, bless him. You'll know what I mean, but he's a, he's a classic Kudera as well. And the next one is kind of related to that. It's almost like a subcategory of Kudera and it's, the dandere characters. Now dandere is a bit like kuru and dere, but instead of kuru, it's dammari, so it's like silence and then dere. Now this trope I'm not too fond of because I often find them a tiny bit boring. And um, so examples include Dante from Pio Fiore and Hijikata from Hakuoki. So you could argue that 
it's not quite a coup d'etat, I personally think it is, but a completely different category of dan dede. Um, but I think they're sort of quite similar and more a subcategory. And they're the type that's really quiet all the time, you know, they don't really speak much. And so you can't really, you can't grasp what they're thinking or, or where their thoughts are. But then occasionally they show you that like cute side. And, and again, it's that gap. Oh, I love gaps. <laughs> So yeah, so the extremely quiet type that doesn't talk much, hasn't got much like expressions on his face or anything, but then when he starts liking you shows like moments. So for example, let me give you a scenario. Um, I'm making this up by the way. So one that I've come across in an unlocalized game actually, I'll just use a, a one that exists, is a character as a reward, says the main character, the Dan Dede character says the main character, oh, um, as a thanks, I'd like to, uh, like to give you something. And he says this, you know, with like no expression or anything. And the main character's like, mm, I don't know, I don't, I can't think of anything that I want, right? And then the Dan Dede character's like, what? Oh, okay, well, if you think of something, tell me. And then, and then later down the lines, he might see the main character saying to like a sub character or something, oh, actually, if you could get this for me, or if you could give th this to me, then that would be great type of thing to like the sub character. And the Dan Dere character will be watching this. And then later down the lines in a different scene, you'll kind of see him be like, what was that thing that you wanted from so-and-so? <laughs> in almost a jealous way and um, I don't know I find that really cute because it's like a tiny bit of possessiveness um added in there and that sort of thing I really like so but yeah <laughs> you can tell that although that it's not my favorite trope there are certain scenarios that do make my heart beat and give me butterflies <laughs> now the next one and this is actually one of my favorite tropes is the oresama character now oresama is like a term you a, a guy would refer to himself like ore is you know a co commonly used thing for me in an informal sense now sama is like um a, a basically a kind of something you add at the end of someone's name if they're really really high up like a prince or a king or something so referring to yourself as ore sama is kind of like only people who are really cocky and confident do that and um they're usually like a bully trope or, you know, they're, they're like, think super highly of themselves. And to be honest, in real life, I would avoid them like the plague because I'd be like, you're really annoying. <laughs> but in Otomi games, I particularly like them because they're usually like quite forward or they think they're better than the main character. But then when the main character diverts in a certain way, they get taken aback and then they end up liking the Oh, I don't know. There's just something about them. And I just, I think I just like the really forward, aggressive almost characters that really show the main character how much they like them. Or what you often also see in Lord of Summer characters is that they keep on like, particularly the bullying kind, um, they'll keep on like being mean to the main character because they actually like them and but they don't understand that so they keep on like trying to get the main character's attention by being mean and things and it's I don't know I just find it cute <laughs> oh fangirling a bit too much and an example of this is Oda Nobunaga um from uh, Ikemen Sengoku and I couldn't really think of many from the top of my head with localized so let me add an unlocalized one. One is um, the Red Rose from Zettai Kaikyu Gakuen as well as um, Meiji from Dance with Devils. So there, oh and another one and I think more people know this is Ayato from Diabolic Lovers. So those are examples of an Odesama character and you can tell I like them because I came up with a whole bunch of examples there. Oh, this is another classic childhood friend trope. I, I really, I, this, this trope does kind of give me butterflies as well because it's often that, you know, what I like is when the childhood friend really likes this character, the main character, but the main character is so oblivious. They're like, oh, what do you mean? And you're just seeing they're like rooting for the main character, like, come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> 
I just find the interaction cute because there there are so many moments where they'll almost tell the main character how they feel, but then they go, oh no, I don't want to ruin this friendship sort of relationship going on, so I won't say anything. And it's that bittersweetness that really gets to me. And oh, it's just so cute. And an example of this is, um, oh, what's his name? He's the red guy. He's a red-haired guy in Lover Pretend. I can't remember his name. Oh my god, what was it again? Takuma? Anyway, look up Lover Pretend. It's the red-haired guy. He is a childhood friend trope that's like that. Now, another one that's slightly different is Xing from Amnesia. However, they're already together and in this sort of childhood trope case, it's more the childhood friends protecting the main character at all costs and it's kind of that overprotectiveness that is quite cute, though I prefer it when the main character doesn't know that the childhood friend likes them. I think that's cuter. Now, another one is the player trope. So the player trope is the one that often has girls around them and they're often like play being a complete player. And so normally I, I, I do like this trope. However, what I've often come like I've come across is you get scenes where the main character sees them with like another girl or something and there's a misunderstanding and I don't know it just makes me so uncomfortable observing that so though I like the characters that are you know super popular because I mean typically they are good looking um I just I don't know the root uh, more often than not does give a little bit of an angsty feel and examples of this is Ikki um, from Amnesia and Helvetica from uh, Busfellows. Helvetica, my favourite character. <laughs> but I like him for other reasons. Um, I'm not too fond of this one, the poster boy. So the poster boy is like the main love interest that you often see on the cover of the game. Now sometimes I'm surprised and I really like them, but often they have a very, they're, they're confident, they're nice, they're like the hero character almost, where they come to the rescue when the main character's in trouble, or they have a deep connection with the main character in some way or another, and but often, I don't know, I just don't really find them all that interesting, like because they usually have a very standard personality and some of these include and as much as I like them it's just not up there with all the other characters is um Lupin from Code Realize and Aiji from Colin Malice and I'm sure many of you are gonna hate me for saying that they're not really like my type because you know I know their popularity but it is what it is and that's supposed to boy oh next one the Megane trope. So Megane is literally just uh, glasses in Japanese and it's any character who's wearing glasses and I'm aware that some of you have, have a real thing for guys with uh, glasses so that's a that's a, a fun one. Examples include Kento from uh, Amnesia and Furan from Code Realize. I like Fran, he's cute. He's also a cinnamon roll which is a term I've never heard in Japanese but I think it means they're like fluffy and cute so I guess you could call that a trope as well oh okay this is my least favorite so sorry to those out there who really like this trope but I'm afraid this is my least favorite and that's the shota characters now shota shota is sort of like short in Japanese I believe <laughs> I could be wrong but as far as I'm aware that's what it means and it's the characters that look kind of like almost childlike and I don't know as a 27 year old the childlike thing just I just don't really find it all that appealing. So some examples would be Himuka from Olympia Soiree, which his root I really liked. However, he just looked too girly and too short for me. Another one, and this one I actually really can't stand. Like I couldn't go through the character roots or anything. He looks cute, but like as a like an Otome game character, I just really can't stand it and this one the very few characters where I will force skip the route if I have to is Kanato from Diabolic Lovers although in his case I don't think it's necessarily only that he's a Shota character but also his unreasonable angry anger issues <laughs> he's just really mean and not in the right way Oh, this is a funny one. The older man trope. <laughs> so a classic example is Vindor from Cafe Enchante. Um, they're basically like 
the guys that are super old you know i don't mind this because usually they make them still look really attractive even though they're in their sort of 40s or 50s um I'm, it's not my favorite trope but they have their perks like often they have more experience in you know dating and stuff and and they give advice to the main character and it's kind of cute and they have like a I, I don't know a, a kind of like a dad like feel to them and I guess some people like that so that's another one and next is Menghera I guess this is more of a Japanese term maybe so maybe I should have left it till later but Menghera stands for um mental health and it's for those who you'd expect need mental health care so <laughs> uh it's a really dodgy trope where you know and in fact i'd say all of the characters in diabolic lovers would be a great example of a men hit a character but they're the type of characters where you look at and you go oh, oh are you okay like oh no i need to fix you like and they're a bit unpredictable and a bit dodgy like you're like oh no oh no don't do that oh no like <laughs> yeah they're fun though i personally like them because they're an anatomy game if you know what i mean um people like that in real i would i wouldn't consider going into a relationship with them more like try and help them as a friend um but in an anatomy game it's all like fantasy so they do make interesting characters and lastly of the localized is the uh well, actually no this is the last this is the second last uh the big puppy trope so big puppy is like my in real favorite trope i guess my boyfriend's like that and the big puppy trope and in japanese it's called ogata ken which is literally big dog but um, i call it big puppy because dog kind of sounds rude in english so puppy sounds cute and more accurate it's the characters and they're typically quite big and muscular and um they're just and they have like a dog-like feel in the sense that puppy like even um that they're very loyal they Get, are very like obsessed and happy with the character in like a puppy kind of way and just throughout the whole route you're just like oh my god you're so cute and it's a bit different to the de -de 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 characters in that the de -de -de -de, they just they're quite standard in that they're just lovey-dovey from the start whereas often i find that the big puppy dog characters as one well, looks wise they're my type because i like big guys but also that it's just a loyalty you really feel safe with, with them like they would definitely not cheat type of thing and I don't know, they're just comforting and just cute. And an example is Yamato from Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly. I would consider him a puppy character. And yeah, I think he became my favorite in that game actually. And lastly, and I'm not gonna give an example for this because part of the fun I believe for this trope is that you are surprised uh, by them, but it's the Yandere trope. And that's like my absolute favorite Otome trope. I just, Basically, it's yang, yang is for the yandere. Yandere is like depressed or messed up in the head, and dere as well, lovey dovey. And um, typically, this trope, they're a tiny bit messed up in the head, like they've got a bit of a loose screw. And what typically happens is they latch onto the main character and then become so obsessed with them that they might end up like basically putting them in a room and making sure that they don't come out for the sake of their safety, which can sometimes be true, but usually it's more, they're so protective and obsessed with the main character that they just don't want the main character to go anywhere, if you know what I mean. They just want to keep them within their facility, vicinity, like kind of there watching them. And, but oh, I don't know why. I think the reason why I like Yandere characters is because they're just so psychologically messed up. And I guess it connects with the Menghera characters where, you know, they you think you really need some mental health care. Um, but I also like the whole obsessive trope. And also for me, part of the fun is you're playing the game and then you pick up on certain cues throughout the playthrough where you're like, are, are you? You, you you could be and often more often than not i love it when i think okay this person's a little bit suspicious and then you get it right and you're like oh my god so he was he was <laughs> and i like doing the guessing game but yes i won't give you an example because um i think i think uh yeah as i said the part of the fun is discovering which one it is however there is one notorious character in a game that you may already know of for being yandere and i think that may be the first yandere most people come across and then end up liking 
and I missed this one, but um, it's a trope that I've kind of made up myself, but it's the mystery trope. And the reason why I call it the mystery trope is that it's characters that you encounter and you go, something about you is suspicious, you're hiding something, or you've got a deep past, or you know, there's just something mysterious about them, you can tell they're hiding something. And so I call them the mysterious characters, or mystery characters, and examples of this is like Yosuga or Saint Germain. I don't know about you, but when I first looked at the game, and this isn't a spoiler by the way, I'm talking about like my first impressions. When I first saw those two characters, I kind of went, I don't know, you just, there's something mysterious about you. And usually it's related to some sort of darkness they hold in their past or, you know, something. I'm not saying the characters I just mentioned are like that, by the way. I'm just saying they have that feel you get when you look at them, as an example. So yeah, that's that. Now moving on to the more Japanese terms. Um, so the one that came to mind is Hushigi-chan. So Hushigi is like weird. And then Chang is, well, the thing that you add at the end of certain people's names if you find them cute or they're younger than you or typically girls, um, it's an informal term. But Hushiki Chang is kind of like characters where you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they will say and do things where you're like, huh, why did you do that? <laughs> and they're kind of cute for that because of their weird quirks. And examples that come to mind are 100% Okazaki and the reason why I like Okazaki from Colin Malice is because of their hushigi ness where they're just with his weird snacks and weird napping in the middle of the road like things he does where I'm like huh? <laughs> And same goes for Mozu, where he says and does things where you're like, what the? Why'd you do that? Why'd you say that? Are you sure? Are you okay? <laughs> and um, I think it's fun because often they make me laugh and giggle a little bit because their behaviour does. It's quite amusing. Now these terms are a little bit, maybe not so much tropes, but terms referred to um, for types of men, I guess. And you get sort of nikushokuke and soushokuke. Now nikushokuke is carnivore in Japanese and it's for guys who are very like forward, very, they have, it's like they have a high sex drive or something. They're like, they're really forward, they're really gun for the main character and I personally like that. So, you know, typically the tropes I like are uh, more carnivores. And soushokuke is um, herbivore in Japanese and it's for guys who are very like, very kind of, they kind of aren't really that forward, they're a bit shy, you know, I think the main character really has to do the uh, chasing here type of thing. Um, and let me give you a couple of examples. For herbivore, I would say Himuka is a classic example, like he seems very held back i feel like there isn't really that much of a i don't know it's not like he's trying to pursue the main character perhaps he wants to but he's very held back um as for a carnival let me think hmm and say Ayato, basically any Oresama character really. I would say Ayato is quite a carnival character. He's always trying to chase after the main character and trying to drink her blood. So, you know, he's very much a carnival. <laughs> and often the player tropes, I guess, are carnivals. And the next one I mention is kind of like almost a mix of the two. Um, in Japan, you call it a roll cabbage, or in English, I guess that would translate to cabbage roll. And <laughs> I find this kind of funny, this term. The reason why it's a cabbage roll is because cabbage rolls have is a dish where there's a little lettuce wrapped around a sausage. And I guess basically the term is for characters that seem like they're a herbivore, like they would be, you know, reserved and wouldn't chase the main character. But in reality, oh, how wrong we are. Like, they're, they're actually very forward and very, like, actually, you know, shows that sort of interest in the main character. And uh, I think that gap of you expecting something and then ending up with something completely different is incredibly fun. And I'd say, like, a I can't think of any that really fit that trope in English games. 
However, I think the closest that comes to that is Tokisada from Olympia Soare, where, you know, you're like, oh, he looks like a Shota character, you know, he just seems like a nice guy, but when those situations occur, you're like, oh, okay, well, hello there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, I didn't expect that from you. Wow, that's a lot of fieriness. <laughs> so I'd say that is an example. And I think that concludes the tropes um, list. Like, I think I've told you all the tropes that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, please do comment below and tell me any more if you know of any more um, with like examples maybe and uh, maybe I can add it to my description or something. But anyway, hopefully that was informative and enjoyable to you. As always, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos. Bye!